What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Uh, if you're wondering why this video is brighter than the last video I did, that's because I didn't have my recording lights on. Wasn't Didn't even notice it. <laughs> but uh, hopefully it's not too big of an issue. Um, today I'm going to be getting into a video that I was absolutely planning to watch at this very moment. There was no possibility at all that I completely forgot about this and somebody had to remind me through a comment. That Absolutely not. It, it did not happen. I was meaning to do uh, the North Korea video and I was going to do the Macedonia video in between it and then South Korea. I wasn't going to do South right after North Korea. That was never the plan. Never the plan. But uh, anyway, <laughs> let's get into this. This is, like I said, the... Geography Now video about South Korea. It says ROK. I'm guessing that stands for Republic of Korea. And let's see what it has to offer. Uh, before I jump into this, I want to let you guys know this video was uploaded by Geography Now. I will have a link for their channel at the end of this video. The last 30 seconds, an icon will pop up. You click on it. It'll take you to their channel. You can watch, like, subscribe, all the other good stuff. Also, if you want to show the original content creator support, I highly recommend that you check out the original video. I have a link for it in the description box down below. If you want to watch it on your own, that way you don't have to worry about me pausing, talking over it, whatever else, because people tend to have an issue when I talk over certain stuff. The original video is right there. If you want to show them support without watching the video twice, what I recommend is you click, uh, you right click the original link in the description box, click open new window or open in a new tab, have the video playing, like put the video on mute and then press play and have both my video and this video playing at simultaneously. You could be watching my video while this video plays in the background. And by the time my video is done, their video will be done as well. You'll give both of us a view and you'll give them ad revenue so they can continue to make these videos. Now, with that being said, let's jump into this and continue. 여러분 안녕하십니까? 오늘 특별한 Let's 손님을 모시고 왔습니다. 제 어머니입니다. 가만히 있마. 엄마, 아 자기 소개 부탁합니다. 아 안녕하세요. 저는 Paul 엄마입니다. Paul. That's it. <laughs> Paul. We reached the last and final country of my own personal heritage, so I figured why not go out with a bang and bring my own mom on the show. I thought her. your name was Barbie. I'll basically kill you. It's time to learn my entire life's a lie. I thought it was For the record, yes, my mom speaks English, and oh. whenever she comes on screen, we'll most Never likely mind. speak English <laughs> with each other since my Korean skill level is equivalent to a five year old that got electrocuted in the brain. Nonetheless, that's okay! This episode will be a piece of chopsack duck. Let's begin. It's like shock therapy, lobotomy. Now, if you haven't already seen Bobby's the North Korea the episode, I suggest thing. you do because it covers some of the context you'll need for this episode. Anywho, first of all, South Korea makes up the bottom half of the Korean Peninsula in East Asia, located between the Yellow Sea, the Gyeonggi Bay, the Jeju Strait, and the Korea Strait off Japan's Tsushima Island. And this thing, which be careful what you call it, the Chinese and Koreans call it the East Sea, whereas the Japanese and others might call it the Sea of Japan. The country is divided into eight provinces, six... Is that like a really big... Um, uh, issue? Kind of like the whole Macedonia for Greece and the Macedonians or the Greek territory, not the Greek territory, the name Macedonia and the Greek territory uh, called Macedonia in Greece. I'm guessing, I don't know. The East Sea, whereas the Japanese and others might call it the Sea of Japan. The country is divided into eight provinces, six metropolitan cities that act as their own entities, a special oh. self-governing province, Jeju-do Island, and the capital Seoul that has the title of Special City. They got a lot of independent well. Then you have this weird things. thing, Sejong, a special autonomous city. Back in 2007... I wonder if it's independent, like, the same way you not, uh, the states in the U.S. are technically independent, but they still have a overall federal branch that governs everything, or... Are they independent, like, small countries almost? City acting as its own entity as well. Then you have this weird thing, Sejong, a special autonomous city. Back in 2007, the government was like, Crap, we have too many people here in Seoul. Yeah, half the country lives here. We need to move some people out. That's actually a good idea. But how do we make them move? Why don't we move the government buildings and make a second capital? We could also incentivize people to move in. Kind of work with Brazil. Great. 
but you first. So now, technically, South Korea has two capitals. Psh, back oh. in my day, there were only eight provinces with Jeju-do and Seoul was the capital. Uh, South Korea owns and administers over 3,500 islands off its coasts, the largest one being Jeju-do, which is kind of like the Hawaii of Korea. You know what's really strange? If South Korea was an island, it would look eerily similar to the shape of Ireland. Cool. Anyway, as we mentioned in the North Korea episode, South Korea has a border with their brothers up north at the DMZ, or Demilitarized Zone, patrolled by over 2 million people at any given moment. In addition, there are four known tunnels that have been built underneath the border, including what South Korea calls the Third Tunnel of Aggression. Basically, in 1978, it went down like this. <laughs> Oh, what the? Why is there a tunnel under my- Oh, no. Hey, UN, North Korea built this as an act of aggression. Uh, no, it's a coal mine. There's no coal here. It's all granite and igneous rock. And It's a very naughty coal mine. <laughs> Shout out for those of you that got that reference. Uh, no, it's a coal mine. There's no coal here, it's all granite and igneous rock. And what about those other three tunnels we discovered? Clearly we were looking for coal in other places because it wasn't here. Looking Today it's a tourist spot heavily guarded by South Korean troops. Places. There are suspected to be possibly around 20 more tunnels, but info on that is classified. Otherwise, South Korea has 11 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the Baekje Mounds, these Dolmen Sites, Changdokun Palace, Gyeongju Historic Village, Ainsa Temple, Andong Hwahe Maul, Hwasong Fortress, the Jongmyo Shrine, Naman Sansong Fortress City, the Royal Tombs of the Joseon Dynasty, and Bulguksa Temple. Otherwise, some other notable spots of interest might include places like Everland, Korea's largest theme park, and Lotte World, the world's largest indoor theme park, mm -hmm. Bukung Palace, Seoul Tower, the War Memorial, Lotte Tower, the tallest building in the peninsula and fifth in the world, yeah. the National Museum, Dongdaemun Market, Busan's Fish biggest? Market, Daegu's Arboretum, the Thermal Springs of Wonju. Mom, what's your favorite place to visit in Korea? Maybe you can uh, go to the uh, Gangwon-do. Interesting place, so you can see mm. that. And the list goes on and on. Just like Japan, there are too many quirky, interesting, colorful sites to list. Alas, we must move on. Dun, dun, dun. If you go to South Korea, you'll notice that the countryside is actually very picturesque if you can get all the tacky apartment buildings out of the way from your view. First of all, cradled away in the docile Amurian plate, Japan and it's China like take up most of the heavy of earthquakes, tsunamis, and typhoons, like so they don't really experience anything too crazy in terms of natural areas. catastrophe. Around 80% of the country is mountainous. They share the same Tebek Eastern mountain Europe. chain with North Korea. The longest river is the Nakdong that flows all the way from the mountain chain into the East Sea along Busan. They don't really have a lot of big lakes, the largest one being Chungju, artificially created by a dam. Since North Korea took Mount Pektu, South Korea's highest point switched to Mount Halasan, a shield volcano located on Jeju Island. It last erupted over a thousand years ago. This makes Jeju Island a unique place from the rest of Korea, with famous lava tube caves, Sunrise Peak, and the Dragon Head Coast. In Boryong, you have the famous mud flats that holds a festival every year that draws in over two million visitors. Bolsong is famous for their tea fields. The problem is that summers are so incredibly humid and filled with mosquitoes. Mom, do you remember when I was a kid, they made me camp in the Yongdong pine fields, and it was like, oh, it's so terrible. They made me brush my teeth and like, bathe in the river and the bathrooms were just holes in the ground yes i remember <laughs> i've ne never been there but i heard all kind of Terrible story, wow. <laughs> <laughs> On oh, every year between winter and spring, they experience Hwangsa, the yellow dust season in which dust particles from the Gopi Desert are swept up by fast winds and cover all of East China and the Koreas, sometimes even as far as Japan and parts of Russia. This is the reason why you see so many Asians wearing those surgical masks like oh, every year. Yeah. Now, in the North Korea episode, I discussed I a list like of notable Korean dishes. Slash. I'm not going to do it again. But as you know, kimchi Thing is the national like dish. But we kimchi will be able to learn the first time. First, now keep in mind there are hundreds of different types of kimchi out there, but cabbage is the most. Uh, what did it say? Mom keeps looking at monitor. It's her first time in the studio. <laughs> yeah, it happens to me all the time. A lot of times I'll be looking at this screen because this is what I'm looking at for my uh, feedback. But the camera's right here. <laughs> so a lot of times when you see me go like this, it's because I'm looking at the, the I guess technically, studio as opposed to the camera. So I, I'm still learning too, uh, Barbie Mom. You don't have to worry about that. Um, I've always wanted to try kimchi. Uh, normally whenever I, my only way I can really get it is if I get it from a jar at, uh, some regular box store where I live at, like Kroger or Walmart or something like that. And 
I'm very skeptical about trying kimchi that's been processed, mass produced, and served in a jar. I'm iffy. If I were to have kimchi, I'd rather have it fresh. Maybe there's a place nearby that serves Korean. I don't know. I'd have to look it up, but I want some authentic uh, uh, kimchi. I'm not really too much of a fan of really bitter stuff. I would prefer to have a slight sweet taste with spice and some heat to it. But you guys have to let me know how you feel about kimchi. And there are hundreds of different types of kimchi out there, but cabbage is the most popular one. But the kimchi is my favorite kimchi. Mom, what's your favorite kimchi? I like your favorite kimchi. 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 Cucumbers and chop them up, skin them, uh, make them real bite sized, and then take like some tomatoes and chop those up real, uh, like into like diced pretty much, and put them in a bowl. Then she would take some type of uh, Italian dressing or some type of vinaigrette, something like that, and mix it all together. And I mean, maybe put a little bit of like peppers and stuff, but really, that's all she would have just those. Diced tomatoes, diced cucumbers, uh, Italian dressing, go to town. <laughs> One dish that's kind of unique to South Korea as opposed to North Korea is that they kind of like to eat sunnakji sometimes. Live squirming octopus dipped in hot sauce. Yeah. They also like to eat live spoon worms. Trust me though, that's kind of tame compared to some regions in China. Economy wise though, South Korea is all about the tech industry. Some of their largest companies aren't spoon The reason I'm pausing so much is because he talks fast and I don't want to talk over him because I've already missed a tiny bit i'll probably have to go back but i don't want to miss any more aren't spoon worms the one uh, those bugs uh or those worms that like spit out their guts you know the white lightning bolt looking thing like is that spoon worms it looks like them kind of tame compared to some regions in china economy wise though south korea is all about the tech industry some of their largest companies being lg lotte sk group daewoo hanjin kia and the crowning glories samsung and hyundai samsung, today south korea is the fifth largest export in the world with the g20's largest I budget surplus it also Japanese. has the world's eighth highest medium household income Life's highest lie, in yeah. asia and it also has the highest credit rating out of any country in east asia as of 2015 mm. they achieved the title of being the world's largest shipbuilder at over 2 million in gross tonnage about 41 percent of the world's total on top of that in 2005 they became the world's first country to fully transition into high-speed internet south korea takes tech very seriously and it exudes through the people's lives every day in a very interesting way i mean they even have their own robot prison guard this means we got to take it over too i wonder how you program koreans are kind of i wonder how you program prejudice into a, a, a prison guard a robot prison guard <laughs> it reminds me of the episode of family guy with uh joe and the 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 mechanized police wagon he had <laughs> and it was like showing how how to arrest uh suspects and like when peter got under it was like you were under arrest and it came down with the handcuffs and and uh and detained him but then when cleveland got under he was like cleveland no was like minority suspect and just came out with these like clubs and started beating the hell out of him there's a danger he's got a gun they just came out and planted a damn gun next to him uh, <laughs> uh i wonder i wonder how how do you program a robot police or a, ro a robot prison guard to abuse its power? Because it's not really a prison guard until it's abused its power. That's a joke for those of you that might be prison guards and watching this. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of fine people out there that does your job. They're like sponges. When they see something they like, they watch it, they observe it, they imitate it, they memorize it, they recreate it, master it, and obsess over it. This can be both a good and bad thing depending on what we're talking about. First of all, South Korea has about 51 million people and has the highest percentage of adults 25 to 34 years old that have tertiary education degrees. The country is almost completely homogenous at about 96% ethnically Korean, whereas the remaining 4% are made up of a number of foreigners, mostly being Chinese, Americans, and Vietnamese. They also use the South Korean won as their currency, they use the Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of 
the road. Now, without even really having to explain that much, I'm pretty sure you're all aware of how incredibly different South Koreans are from their brothers up north. Yep. In fact, on average, South Koreans are about two inches or five centimeters taller than the North Koreans due to their access to healthier and more diverse food options. South Korea, no surprise, speaks Korean, which is not only unique because there aren't really any languages related to it. Some might say Japanese is like a way distant cousin, but eh. But also because of the writing system. Back in the 1400s, Sejong the Great was like, dude, I'm sick of the Chinese characters. It's too hard. Can we just make new ones? So they did. Today, Hangul, or as the North Koreans call it, Chosungul, is a phonetic alphabet that is incredibly easy to learn. It literally only takes like an hour for anybody to learn it. I mean, this letter makes a n n sound, and this makes an a sound, and so on. The strange thing though is that Hangul is the only writing system in the world that uses syllable clusters. So in order to write, you kind of have to smash either two or three letters into a box format that goes either two across and one at the bottom, or three all the way down. So for example, the word for foot is bal. So you'd have to take the b sound next to the a sound and the u sound, making bal. And that's it. That's like 90% of the writing. Box smashing. Hold up. So, somebody have to explain this to me because I would like to know. What determines which box format you use? Like right here we have the one, two, and the three underneath it. But he also showed one that had one, two, three stacked on top of each other. What determines which box format you're going to use? Is it based on the word itself or is it just of choice? Like if you wanted to, you can make all your uh, uh, words in this format or you can choose to do the other one. Like what determines which one is used? Now, just know I know nothing about the language. So if you get too detailed, you will lose me. <laughs> and the U uh sound making pal. And that's it. That's like 90% of the writing. Box smashing. The problem, though, is that speaking Korean is a nightmare. The grammar is all backwards. There's like subject indicators and possessive prefixes. There's nopen mal, dongap mal, najin mal. Oma, naya hanguga suju no otoya. Otoke senkakanika. Boon, this is a fair egg suju. Now, I don't I speak the language, the and the I could tell in he the North Korea episode, butchered so check it. it out if you want a summary. Basically, after the Korean War, the two Koreas that diverged the very drastically. Essentially, unlike their brothers up north, South Korea became a democratic presidential republic, adopting a capitalistic model for their economy, with free market enterprise encouraging a competitive private sector. This did wonders for them. Today, they are classified as one of the four Asian tigers, along with Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan, meaning that they have grown at an economic rate over 10% annually over the past 30 years. Remember the Germany episode we talked about the Wirtschaft? Yeah, they basically did the same thing. After war times, they started working really hard. Just Google Miracle on the Han River. After the war, most of the Americans left, but they still kept some army bases with soldiers in places like Gyeonggi-do, where my dad was born, and Daegu, where my mom was born. Anyway, South Korea is a place where the future is embraced, but the past is never let go of. Traditional dances like the colorful Choyongmu and Talchum mask dances. If you're lucky to witness it, the long ribbon spinning Pungmul dance can be seen in certain areas. Jultagi tightrope performers and Namsadang acrobatics where people Will launch Ferrell high from seesaws. Like also the amazing traditional raspy voiced pansori singing has never gone out of style. Usually it's accompanied by these drums. Book. Right mom? Book. And what is this one called? Janggu. Janggu. <laughs> Taekwondo and Hapkido are the two national martial arts. No surprise, South Korea ranks number one in the Olympics. Most Koreans at some point will probably learn at least a little bit of Taekwondo. I took it as a kid. And mom, you took it I too, took right? You, you took Taekwondo when you were younger? Yeah, when I was in high school. You were like the only girl in your class, right? Yeah. How many boys were in your class? Oh, 50, 60. And what Ooh, belt did a, you get up to? That's a big class. Yeah. Black belt. So yeah, basically my mom can kill your mom. Why do I have to kill him? <laughs> Speaking of martial arts, South Korea is a conscription country with all men required to serve in the military anywhere between the ages of 18 to 35 for about two years. Women are allowed to volunteer too if they wish. Most Koreans still get married in the Jontong Yeshik traditional hanbok style wedding. And there's also a part where like the bride's family and friends have to like beat the husband's feet for some reason. Mom, why do they do that? Why do they like beat the man's feet during the wedding? Maybe punishing him for take away from their daughter. So they're like punishing him like, oh, it's payback for all the pain you will give me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fun... I don't know. I think they probably do it as a symbol that you ain't about to run away. You ain't about to run away from our goddamn daughter. There will be no divorcing. There will be no standing up at the altar. None of that. We will beat your damn feet and then we will carry you to the altar. So when you get there, you're just stuck up there. Period. We're making this happen. 
Side note, people usually try to avoid marrying someone with the same last name as them in South Korea. The problem is that only three last names make up about half of the entire population. Kim, Lee, and Park. Today, numbers are a little hard to estimate, but many will say that about a third of the country identifies as Christian, mostly Protestant branches, along with a sizable Buddhist community at maybe 20%, whereas the rest claim to vaguely follow ancient traditional Korean-style Confucianism, the indigenous shamanism, or no affiliation at all. In fact, after the US, South Korea sends more Christian missionaries abroad than any other country in the world. Otherwise, tradition aside, Koreans have glided ever- Ironic. America's supposed to be the country that tried to run away from religious persecution, yet now we're the ones that produce the most people that go across the world trying to preach religions or preach Christianity. Ironic sends more Christian missionaries abroad than any other country in the world. Otherwise, tradition aside, Koreans have glided ever so stealthily into the modern world. Today, South Korea has a huge esports industry, and gamers are celebrities. They can make millions. Of course, this can also lead to some problems, as some people have been known to have died by playing nonstop yeah. or actually killing people, or getting arrested for neglecting their children in favor of playing I, video I remember, games. I remember that story. One where you have to raise an online virtual baby. I'm not even joking. That's a true story. Look it up. Like the Japanese, Koreans love their norebangs, mojoktangs, and jimjibangs. However, the difference is that Koreans usually don't cover themselves with towels, they just go butt naked. Hmm, I like your style. South Koreans also have disputably the highest percentage of plastic surgeries performed per capita in the world at around 20 per thousand residents. The most popular one, mostly for women, being the double eyelids. Does the surgery also put makeup on you? Because I'm pretty sure those after pictures have makeup on surgery in which they add a fold to their eyelids as it's seen as more attractive. Parents even usually give their daughters the surgery as a graduation gift. No, I mean like kind of, but like sometimes like like when they come out they're gonna have like the wake up pool. So it's like for like every generation. People thinking about the beauty is getting changed. Oh yeah but you can't change your genetics. <laughs> In terms of controversies, South Koreans usually rank in the top Not 10 yet. or even 5 countries with Not the highest yet. suicide rates. <laughs> Honor culture is so high that sometimes it affects people that don't feel like they meet societal expectations. Students have some of the highest stress levels in the world. Many go to Hagwons after school, which is like another special school. You can go to school after school for more school, and it ends at like 10 p.m. Students get like no sleep. And finally, unfortunately, sometimes Koreans can be a little discriminatory against non-Koreans. As a homogenous nation with no real minority experience prior to the 20th century, you might find shockingly racist depictions of certain people groups that ever yeah i mean i can kind of see why they're not used to interacting with other races so i guess like you know the whole saying uh imitation is the most serious form of fl uh, flattery i'm guessing that's what they're going with it like hey we're cool right look i can i'm acting like you we can and then uh, but the problem is that in of itself has a bad history. <laughs> so even doing that is like <laughs> kind of messed up and maybe they just didn't get the message because, you know, a lot, a lot of these Asian countries, they, well, I don't know about a lot, but I know like Japan in particular, they had like a, what, a three or 400 year period where they just like isolated themselves from everything. So yeah, just not a lot of like racial or not, not a lot of knowledge of the racial tensions around the rest of the world i mean the same way i guess the the best way to describe it for them would be the way certain country uh, minority countries see some of the wealthier uh countries that occupy them is the same as how they would see japan because japan occupied them and i'm willing to guarantee during that occupation they the Japanese weren't just like open arm embracing Koreans. There was probably some racism and uh, uh, ethnic put downs and things like that on their end. So that'll probably be the best way to describe it to them, I guess. Everyone is just kind of comfortable with. Sometimes they even put up signs saying no foreigners. They are just starting to kind of move on from that, but it's Damn. kind of still there. <laughs> anyway, there are so many things I wish I could talk more about, like how Koreans <laughs> use the Korean age system. They ask for your blood type because it's like a horoscope sign type of thing. The festivals of Chuseok and Sunnai. There's still like a surviving heir to the former emperor that exists today. Jeju Island has those diving women. Arirang is like the national song that everybody knows. K-pop and K-dramas have taken the world by storm. Usually K-dramas are accompanied with strange or horribly translated subtitles with the worst commercial interruptions. Oh, 
or hor Was that a joke? <laughs> it had like that tiny little syllable of uh, Korean, but then like this giant text of stuff. Oh, uh, translated subtitles with the worst commercial We're, we're going to read this. Ch Chong Mei. You, okay, typo. You are able of if my loving the. Okay, well, maybe it's in on purpose. Happy time, not in. <laughs> <laughs> sent <laughs> syntax error. <laughs> you brother man old. <laughs> Never once in life in me for the time I having the experience of this because I am being lost of or for avoid me, my family. I am foot surgery time, but but Chris Hemsworth was in DVD player. New hopings arriver. <laughs> in having heart your is love but we can future for so <laughs> over be barbecues <laughs> barbecuing because barbecues if us there which of so too the rice harvest can fortune our crotch book <laughs> i was <laughs> i was what run in 1999 now cello is destiny <laughs> I believe in yes loading lunch eat are so you too no but the Imi Kyoron Yerbon Bobo Sege to Kopi Shimbar Meu Pyonanaminda Oh Chigum Sa Shum Num Sekia Otherwise some famous Koreans throughout okay. history might include people like <laughs> Yi Sun Shin Kim Gu Yu Guan Sun Kim De Jung Pan Gi Moon Song yeah, Chan Shi Yu Sun Man Pak Jong Hee Pak Ji Sung Pak Tae Wan Kim Yu Na <laughs> Actors like Pak Po Gom Song Jung Ki Kim Yu Jong Song He Gyo Contemporary K pop artists like H O T P and Boa Girls Generation Super Junior Junior, AOA, Big Bang, One thing 21, I know about Korean EXO. Pop is Tons of Americans with Korean heritage have also made the mark, like John Cho, take a Cho, bunch of letters Park, and put them together, and that's the name. Barbado. And the list goes on and on. KFO. South Korea went from a war-torn shanty peninsula XRI. to a world-renowned power player. And it all had to do with their international outreach. This brings us to our last and final section, the... South Korea has always kind of had to prove itself against not only their neighbors, but to their own brothers up north to show that they could become something great apart from the political divergence factor. First of all, South Korea has great ties to the European Union as they make up the second largest export partner. Tourism has exploded since the 80s and 90s, and many Koreans study abroad in Europe for college semesters. Japan is like their best frenemy. Although the Koreans loved watching the Japanese being deposed after World War II, it wasn't long until they had their own problems in the Korean War. After the war, the Japanese befriended the South, and since then, relations have gotten much better. Koreans have they can't get enough of Japanese anime, J-pop, and they do like the colorful culture and cuisine as they're one of the largest groups that visit annually. The Philippines was one of the first friends that they had even before this split. They even sent their expeditionary force to help against North Korean invasions during war times. For some weird reason, if you put a Filipino and a Korean together, they just kind of like immediately click and get each other. I mean, why do you think I hired Ken? Aw, yes, thanks man. Yeah, I guess Filipino. you're all right, kind of. Does that mean I get to co-star in the Philippines episode? Yeah, if you can actually edit the video on time and not ruin it by slacking off, Ooh. yes you can. In terms of their close Shots friends, fire. Koreans would probably say China and kind of the US. Both countries host the largest numbers of Koreans in diaspora at around 2.5 million each, and both are the largest export partners. China kind of acts as like the mediator friend between them and North Korea, and they struggled alongside them during the Japanese Empire occupation years, in which both were required to speak Japanese and throw away their customs for like three decades. Like my mom's mom, my grandma. Mom, didn't you say like your, your mom spoke Japanese with your, your stepdad or something like that? Yeah, they uh, spoke with Japanese all the time when I was little. They were educated with Japanese when Japanese uh, occupied Korea. But they never mm. spoke Japanese to you? Because I don't know Japanese and then they were kept a secret. <laughs> they kept a secret for the secret language for the from children. For children. <laughs> Kind of like what you and dad did with me in Korean. <laughs> like, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. They had a secret language. That's very smart. <laughs> the U.S. played a major role during the Korean War and has a mutual defense treaty, meaning that any attack on South Korea would summon an immediate U.S. response. Of course, the U.S. still has military bases located in the country, which of course brings in some anti-American protests since many are kind of weary of the U.S. presence. Nonetheless, Barack Obama is even quoted for saying that South Korea is one of the U.S.'s closest allies and greatest friends. Yeah. If you're going to accept America's friendship, you got to understand there's baggage that comes along with that. If you want us to be your friends, you got to understand there's a gift box or a gift bag that we give out to all of our friends. That gift bag includes United States military bases. It includes uh, a contract that talks about sharing resources with each other. Yes, we share resources. 
evenly. And the, the definition of even depends on what we consider the definition of even to be. And also, it comes with protection. So that's good. You, you get to be a part of the, if somebody attacks you, we attack them uh, um, protection plan. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, but Devon Da Vinci, doesn't this sound like what the mafia do when they talk about protections? I say, shut up. Accept the damn gift bag and move on. As they have shared so much over the past seven decades. When it comes to North Korea, though, they kind of see him as like the brother that stubbornly thinks he can still make a point that was lost like 70 years ago. They want to unify, but just one man kind of stands in the way. South Koreans right, have been trying yeah. to sneak propaganda into North Korea by hurling DVDs and USB sticks and gifts and other such items via balloon across the border. They, they got a damn the DVD to, to play stuff is on. to expose North Korea to how great the outside world is. In conclusion, although millennia of kingdoms and empires have passed, much of South Korea's global story starts after the Korean War. This little peninsula has been able to create a supernova of recognition for itself in such a short amount of time. Let's hope that the future brings even more light to the world. Thank you, Mom, for helping me in this episode. Thank you for inviting me here. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Do you really? Oh. Do you really appreciate it? Are you just saying that? Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Kyrgyzstan is coming up next. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, that was cool. And it's funny how Barbie tries to pin his lack of being able to speak Korean properly on his mom by saying, oh, well, you're uh, just like how your parents kept Japan Japanese away from you is the same way you kind of kept the Korean language away from me. No, she taught you Korean. You just sucked at it. <laughs> you just sucked at it, okay? Don't pin that on your mom for your lack of skills when it comes to speaking Korean. Now, this is coming from somebody that has no secondary language. I mean, I know very few words in Spanish. You know, como te llamo? Uh, um... Estead is a word, I'm pretty sure. Uh, me llamo S. Um, there we go. That, that, that's my. That's how far my language in Spanish goes. So, obviously, that puts me in a prime position to judge everybody that has an accent or everybody that speaks funny American. I can make fun of you all. I all all I want. Because all language that matters is English. American English. So you can get the fuck out of here with that Z and lift and stuff like that too. That's right. I ain't forgot it. It's still on. This little battle between America and Britain is still on. And yeah, I can judge you for all the languages that you speak because they mean nothing. If you can't speak proper American, then that means that you're stupid and you don't know how to speak at all. Says... The typical ignorant American that likes to pretend that, like I said, English means everything and will judge people just because they have a slight accent in the English language, despite the fact that they probably know how to speak seven different languages fluently, but because they are slightly off on English, we want to judge them. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. There will be a link for Geography Now's video at the end of this video. Like I said, the last 30 seconds, uh, you use it to go over there. They have a ton of other countries. Last I checked, they were on S. They were doing everything in alphabetical order. Now they're on the S countries. They might be even further down than that. I have to check out their channel. Uh, I mean, I know you're saying, oh, but they did South Korea. Obviously, they're on the S's. I don't know if they did this one in that order i don't think i think they might have done this after north korea i could be wrong though uh well i will go ahead and give you guys the deuces i look forward to seeing you guys in a future video until then i'm devon da vinci hope you just been a little more enlightened hit that like button subscribe and share down there if you want to show me some support and i'm gonna give you the deuces peace